Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. This is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we have a 63% chance of being executed. Because this week we listen to The Memory Cheats, not the podcast, the audio drama. Written by, once again, by Simon Garrier, or Greer, or however you say it, again. <laughs> D- directed by Lisa Bowerman. And released in September 2011. Once again, uh, directed by an actress who plays a companion of the Doctor, although Lisa Bowman only plays a companion in the audios and not on screen at any point. Huh. She, yeah, and this has Wendy Padbury returning as Zoe. And her daughter, as I just found out from you five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, returning as... Uh, I don't remember if she was returning. I don't remember if this no, is the it's, same it's lady. A, it's but. different because at some point in the audio, she's like, oh, yeah, you told this other person, blah, 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 <laughs> this stuff. Yeah, well, I wasn't paying attention too much to the small details because they were pretty boring. And I was because I listened to this on a terribly boring drive from San Francisco Which is, if you don't know to where we are, approximately a six to seven hour drive. Really? Yeah, well. I thought it was like 12 hours, but I never drove there, or I've never even been there. It's six to seven. Took us about five and a half because we drove overnight. (laughs) (laughs) And there was no traffic, but. Yeah, so didn't have much else to pay attention to because it was pitch black outside. And, uh,. Yeah. (laughs) Didn't make the audio any better, by the way, if you were wondering. Um, I mean, well, well, we'll get to that. So it begins with Zoe talking with this person. I think her name was Jen. Jen's like... Wow, that's a really generic name. (laughs) Jen. I mean, so is Zoe. I I mean, but not as generic. Like, well, what are we going to call this character? I don't know. What name haven't we used so far? Jen. (laughs) I mean, it's like... It's the point in the show where they either have to start... If they want someone to have a, a generic, like, English name, they're going to have to either start reusing names or get a little weirder. I'm all, Yeah, I'm almost just, certain that yeah. every conceivable name has been used in Doctor <laughs> Who at least probably three times over at this point, <laughs> if you include all of this, you know, extended universe nonsense. So, yeah, Jen is apparently her, I guess, defender in this case against the company because the company has captured Zoe and is like we're putting you up on 36 charges including I don't know murder I suppose Jen never yeah. enumerates what the charges are well there's murder in the story that Zoe tells so she claims yeah well um, Jen is all yeah you have a 63% chance of being executed uh, but you could take this plea deal and you'll get off scot free <laughs> Uh, you just have to tell us about time travel, and yeah. she's all, I don't know anything about time travel, I don't remember. Yeah, I never traveled with the Doctor and Jamie, I only met them once. That time we repelled the Cybermen. And the Cybermats. <laughs> don't forget about the Cybermats that killed that one guy. <laughs> Look, yeah. Cybermats are pretty dangerous. Yeah. For like almost as reasons. dangerous as the Cybermen, as we might see a couple weeks from now. Hint. It's actually not really a hint, probably, but... <laughs> no? Yeah. <laughs> so, Jen brings up these documents by this guy. Uh, I don't yeah. remember his name. Something that started with an L. I don't even think it's on the wiki, so we it's not. might as well not bother checking. <laughs> Uh, So, yes, she's talking about this guy, and he wrote this report about meeting Zoe, Jamie, and the Doctor in Uzbekistan in 1917. Yeah, and I looked it up, and, well, I mean, the region... 1917? 1919, I think. Yeah, you're right, it was 1919. The region existed, Uzbekistan, or Stan, or, well, it's really Stan, so I guess I'll just say it that way. Um, But, like, the country itself didn't exist until, like, the 90s, so I guess they're just calling it that anyway. Doctor Who has only occasionally been known for its historical accuracy. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, this is apparently right after Russian Revolution. Yeah, and Russia taking over the area that makes, soon to yeah. be known as Uzbekistan. <laughs> yeah, and the area making it the largest country ever. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm pretty sure I didn't really realize this until now that I just said it, but pretty sure Russia or like Soviet Union, maybe, or maybe Russia today, but I guess it's smaller. Pretty sure Soviet Union is like the biggest single country to ever exist in the world. Yeah. If you count empires as countries, then it's the British Empire. Really? Is that bigger than... Eh, yeah, the, I, British, I the British Empire at its height was... The sun never yeah. sets. So they had India, they had South Africa, um, they had us. the colonies. Well, us, but like... Yeah, the 13 yeah. colonies. British Empire was substantially larger than most mm, I other. don't know. Like, Siberia is pretty... Pretty no, huge. this is this is an actual fact. The British Empire mm. was the largest empire in the uh, world. All right, I mean, I believe you, but I'm still gonna like look it up. Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> they well, Jen tells Zoe about these letters that she has from this guy. Yeah, he was like a, a colonel or something. Yeah. He was a military guy who'd been involved in several different campaigns, and he was now hanging out in. Middle a village in the middle of actual nowhere. Yeah, I guess. It's a village that's extremely poor, Jen makes note of. Uh children are disappearing. There's only one school in the town. Yeah. Apparently so they that's... know how to play football there too. <clears throat> well, it's the world's sport, so um I mean yeah, that's the main sort of problem that's facing this town right off the bat is that the children are disappearing. And the doctor, Jamie, and Zoe are like, wow, we should probably do something about this, <laughs> even though we're literal outsiders. Well, the doctor's, they, they the doctor's really doing can. the uh, power of the Daleks thing. He's passing himself off as an oh, expector yeah. who hasn't quite arrived yet. <laughs> and, and the Helicon Prime thing. Yeah, and they uh, they just believe him. Uh, they They think he's this inspector from Mother Russia uh, because... You know, they're all like, oh, the Russian regime's coming to save us, going to save us, all the kids disappearing. Yeah, but weren't they also pretty suspicious of the Russians? Yes, probably for good reason, considering yeah. that revolution was pretty goddamn bloody. Yeah, and considering the soldiers that show up in, like, part two slash the end of part one, and how sketched they are. But anyway, they kind of just wander around the town for a bit, getting acquainted with stuff. Yeah, and... all the kids like Jamie because he plays football with them. Yeah. And that's pretty much all Jamie does in this, except, like, fight a little bit later. But uh, there's this one weird uh, scene where Zoe mentions the streets were unpaved, I guess, to display how small of a village this is. But the sound effects of them walking on the streets sound like they're walking on, like, concrete or asphalt. So, whatever. I didn't notice that at all. I noticed a couple of male voices in the crowds when they did the crowd scenes. Like, oh, they probably just got some random guy off the side of the street to make some voices <laughs> for the crowd chatter. <laughs> They probably just got, like, Simon Garrier to do it, or I don't know. Or David Richardson. Um, yeah, I don't really remember. I don't think they do anything else other than, other than wander around and just see a couple sights. Well, the doctor does figure out that all the kids who were taken had a window Oh, yeah, facing, facing the east. east. <clears throat> so he's like, oh, the menace is coming from the east. I forget what they thought it was originally, but it's not that. They well, have like this wrong guess. Zoe as to what also it is. says this line at one point where she's talking about, "Oh, everybody thought this mother might have done something to her own kid, but you could listen to what she was saying and realize that no mother would ever do that to her kid." And Jen's like, "Oh yeah, no mother would do that to her kid." And Zoe's like, "My mom sent me away to the academy for the company." Uh, I don't know if this has been established before, if it was established in Echoes of Grey, but apparently the program that Zoe was sent to as a kid was run by the company that's tracking her yeah, down now. I don't remember that from Echoes of Grey, but yeah, maybe it's just me not remembering it. There's also a lot of weird banter like that, like no one would ever do this, so actually they would. Actually, I was a part of it and I was just like, oh, it's kind of hard to follow. Well, it was hard to follow for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. They uh, <laughs> have because they have camels and ride them. But that was not the reason why it was hard to follow. Yeah, the camels showed up and I was like, wait, why is there camels in Central Asia? And then I looked it up and I was like, well, I guess I'm dumb. There are camels in Central Asia. I mean, they could be camels and, uh, wherever you want. You just gotta put the camels on the boat. You just gotta put your mind to it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was like probably the most mind-blowing revelation of this story to me is that there's actually camels 
in Central Asia. <laughs> well, the most mind-blowing revelation for me was still that Jen was played by Wendy Padbury's daughter. <laughs> But yeah, well, they have super similar I, voices, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Uh, it's actually funny that she is her daughter because, I, as I said, I listened to this in the car and I was driving with my dad, so he was listening too. <clears throat> and he was just like, what is this trash now? <laughs> well, afterwards he's like, yeah, it was really hard to differentiate between them. Like, you, you wouldn't even expect that if they were mother and daughter. Like, yeah, maybe more likely that they'd have similar voices, but even still, mm. it, it wouldn't necessarily be exactly the same. Some parents and kids <clears throat> have really similar voices, and I guess this is just one of those cases... Yeah, it was extremely confusing. Yeah, but your dad watches Doctor Who, right? Yeah. Yeah. My mom doesn't watch Doctor Who, like, at all, but I just caught her watching an episode of the 12th Doctor, like, a couple days ago. It's kind of weird. So I watched, like, half of it. And I don't really know, I didn't really know what was happening, because I only watched, like, again, half of it. But they were on, like, a boat. They were on a boat. (laughs) And it was, well, it's a 12th Doctor episode. How many 12th Doctor episodes are on a boat? I don't know. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of boat was it? A large one? I don't know. I'm not what? a boat expert. Was it a boat or a ship? Uh, I don't. A sh- I don't know. A ship. I... So the differentiation between a ship and a boat is that a ship carries Jesus. boats on it. You know, lifeboats make a cruise ship. A, a ship. This is an actual scientific differentiation between the two terms by the way this is what i found out you know there was that time where that you research vessel let people vote for their names and everybody wanted bodie mcboatface <laughs> and uh bodie mcboatface won and they were like well we can't actually call it bodie mcboatface because technically it's a ship because it carries a submersible on well, it well we can still call it that yeah they named the submersible bodie mcboatface because well, it was actually a boat well, that's- whereas the ship was a ship, because it carried the boat on the ship. Okay, well, that's interesting, but it's also kind of stupid of them, because they can name it whatever they want. They yeah, can't... they did. They named it the Richard Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's such a dumb reason, like, well, we can't name it Bodie McBoatface, because it's actually a ship. Like, so what? You can name it whatever you want, you dumb boat faces. Yeah, they did name it whatever they wanted. They just didn't yeah. want to name it Bodie McBoatface, so they came up with a yeah, tenuous they reason. Have, yeah, they didn't have to have that stupid rule as to why they couldn't name it that. <laughs> but hey, no skin off my back. <laughs> no ships off my boat. <laughs> no ships off my 20 private yachts. Can I have one? <laughs> no. Okay. So <laughs> Zoe is telling the story and they this the actual inspector shows up at the end of part one. And they're like he's like, Hey, who are you? And the doctor's like, I'm the expe- inspector and he's like, then who am I? What? <laughs> Everything I know is a lie. No, no. He's actually like, No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Zoe shows up and then I mean, Jen's she's all like, been there for a while, but she like goes to sleep, and yeah, then this lady who I think was semi important. It's the wife of the c- colonel who wrote. Oh the yeah, yeah. She's like, hey, everyone's at this place. You should go there too. They all went there, but they just let you sleep in and didn't wake you up for some reason. It's probably because they don't like you. That's what they told me. They told me not to tell you, but I told you anyway. Okay, no. Oh yeah, they chased off the monster before that happened. Oh yeah, yeah. They encounter a, a shadowy monster that looks sort of zombie-like and grotesque and. That's the only other thing Jamie really does in this is help chase it off here. To them, yeah. it's it's the doctor, Jamie and Zoe, and like a couple townspeople. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the, the, the inspector and Jen's like, "Oh yeah, the inspector killed the colonel and his wife." And then Zoe's all like, "No, he didn't. I killed them." Yeah, and this is the end of part one. And I was like, "Wait, is she telling what's her name that, or is this in the story, or what's going on here? What's going on here, Simon?" <laughs> Well, I really liked this cliffhanger because it was kind of a, you know, it was kind of different from the usual cliffhangers of people being imperiled. The cliffhanger here was Zoe was the one I who imperiled co- someone committed cold-blooded murder. Um, yeah, but you know, it's going to be one of those those things. Like, is her memory cheating? Well, there was a double cop out in this aspect. Um, the first is that when you find out she supposedly killed them, she didn't actually directly kill them. 
Uh, in fact, she's not even really to blame for their deaths at all. Yeah, it's just one of those goody two shoes things where she's like, "I didn't prevent it, so it's my fault completely." Boo hoo. Okay. I no. mean, I guess you could blame her for it because, like she said, she was the one who released the beast, released the creature, <laughs> the kraken, who immediately then killed them. But like, <laughs> there was no way she could have known. Like, it's like partially her fault, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. If she's telling the truth. <laughs> anyway, so they go to the ship. They find the ship yeah, with some the inspector. Russians show up. She cuts a deal with the More inspector. More Russians show up. Um, yeah. The Russians are pretty sketched. They're like, we're going to make your lives better. <laughs> Apparently, Zoe's wearing the sparkly cat suit yeah. in this story. Bringing that back. I was like, was why would you like ever wear that? It was on the, the cover. Yeah, presumably because she said she wore it in this episode. Yeah. And the cover artist actually went through the effort of finding a, an accurate picture of Zoe to put on the cover. Wow, you mean big finished cover artists actually put in effort? Just kidding. No, they, they actually do. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, they have to go through this whole process. Like, they submit the cover art and then to Big Finish, and then Big Finish has to get it approved by the BBC before they can... Yeah. In fact, everything here needs to be approved by the BBC before they can do anything. Like, the script needs to be approved, and then the cover art needs to be approved, and then the final product needs to be approved. Well, it's a lot of uh, approval. Yeah, I'm actually following a lot of the Big Finish cover people on Twitter. I didn't even know I was until they're like, hey, look at this cover I designed for Big Finish. <laughs> well, they're all pretty talented, uh, to be honest. Like, the covers are all really well made, and well, the, the recent ones anyway, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean... There haven't been any ones that were like, that made me go like, whoa, that's a great cover, but I mean, they're not garbage, so at least there's that. I mean, the Phantasmagoria one was pretty boring. <laughs> this picture two <laughs> and the doctors standing next to each other. Uh, that was it. <laughs> that was back in the days of... Oh, yeah, I looked up the Vord helmet. It uh, actually did look similar to... Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> wow. Well, anyway, obviously, we're just not talking about this story because it wasn't that interesting, so... No, no. Uh, so they make it to the ship, and it's revealed that the creature was stealing all the kids because the creature thought the kids were in danger in the town because of the the Russians. Yeah, so the, the backstory of the creature, I guess, is that it was getting too close to Earth. Um, I forget why it was on a, on a ship to begin with, but it got too close to Earth and got shot down um, in World War One, I, I think, or the Russian uh, In Revol- the Russian I Revolution. Russian Revolution. Uh, but I mean, that's that wasn't like in Siberia, was it? I don't know much about it, but it wasn't that in like Western Russia. Yeah. So I don't know. Mostly. I, I guess it got shot down and then just like flew all the way here. Yeah. I, or maybe we're just overthinking it and we just have to accept that it got shot down and, and here it is. I mean, it definitely got shot down in the Russian Revolution because World War One started in 1914, I believe. Well, it could've, he could have been there for a couple years. Um, I don't know. And the Russian Revolution started... 1917. 1917. And Russia withdrew from World War I to deal with its own... Problems. Problems. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's put a hold on that whole world domination thing. We've got to get our own country under control first. So, if it's been... If the ship's been on Earth anywhere two years or less, it was shot down at the Russian Revolution. And if any more, then maybe World War I... I Anyway, yeah, it, it got shot down, and the creature, I guess, just wants to get it working again, and it sees the danger of the Russians uh, controlling Uzbekistan, so it's like, hey, I'm going to save these kids and bring them with me. Yeah, and then, well, okay, so first off, there's been all this, like, talk. Zoe's been talking about, oh, how she liked the Russian dude, because, you know... You could describe him in the same way that all of Zoe's co-workers described her fierce and doesn't take any crap from anybody or whatever the hell she was saying. When did her co-workers describe her as that? The wheel uh, in like in the beginning of this, no, in the beginning of this thing, Jen's like, oh, your yeah. co-workers described you as blah, blah, blah. And she's well, like, well, I am that. I? That's why at the end, Zoe was like, well, you have to make the decision. What am I, Jen? Oh, yeah. She judo flips this one guy. I guess, yeah. it's, I guess it's the inspector. I forgot who it was. Or maybe it's just a Russian It was the inspector because he went to go smack her bottom. Oh, yeah. And she like judo flips him. And I was like, wow, I didn't know Zoe could do that. And yeah, I guess I still don't know if she can do that. <laughs> um, so 
the kids are like trapped in coma states or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the creature is there too. And it's like napping or something. It's, <laughs> it's like immobilized somehow. Yeah. It's um, also hooked up how. to the ship, I think. And yeah, I don't know what it is with the uh, big finish audios and having fleshy walled ships. Cause yeah. Well, Zoe lets the creature thing go and it goes all rage mode. And kills the colonel and his wife, supposedly. Uh, we, should, we should probably have, like, prefixed everything we've said so far with supposedly. Just edit in supposedly at the supposedly. beginning of this summary. Supposedly. <laughs> Actually, the only thing that did happen was that Jamie played football. We know that for certain. Because there's a picture. Maybe it was faked. Yeah, that's what Zoe says. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I see. I didn't get that. This is the point where I was just like, yeah, I don't care what's happening anymore because this is just really boring. So. Well, yeah. so Zoe now drops this big bombshell. She's like, yeah, I uh, I said we should let the children go with the creature. The Doesn't do- the well, doctor no, she says, say that too? Oh, yeah, the doctor says uh, the creature should take the children. And we were all like, what? And then I was like, yeah, we, we should. It's the most logical choice. Yeah, so they do that supposedly supposedly <laughs> and they go back to town and they lie that the doctor got injured by tripping or something <laughs> Some yeah. the most obvious lie ever like hey because the townspeople know about the aliens so or they don't maybe not know that it's an alien but they know that there's some creature so they're like hey we want to go deal with this creature oh yeah he got hurt by falling and tripping yeah definitely so he also says the alien wanted to go back to planet k13911 or whatever something with ones <laughs> threes and nines in it and a K. Always recognize K. K's when it's, your name starts with one. Haha. <laughs> it's uh It's like I was gonna say it's a better version of K9. K19. K911. No, it's KOS something or the other. Oh, they should have named the K9 spin-off K911. <laughs> they can have K9 in America, and then when people call 911, K9 can show, show up. up. Twenty minutes later. If like we get put in here. charge of Doctor Who, we can make a spinoff called K911. Yeah. We can paint K9 in, like, police colors and put a light bar on top. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of a siren, he can play the theme music to K9 and company while yeah. he's zooting down the road. <laughs> yeah, that would uh, be pretty great. Anyway, so now they just leave uh, in the TARDIS. Yeah. <laughs> and then Zoe's like, hey, like, hey, you made your lives a lot worse because now <laughs> not only are you going to be invaded by the Russians, but all your kids are gone too. And then, and then Zoe's like, well, well, actually, no, okay, wait. So Jen goes out of the room and she comes back and she's like, you lied to me. And then Zoe's like, yep, I made it all up. <laughs> Joke's on you, Jen. Company's made, not getting anything out of, the, out of me. I made the entire story up. I read the letters you showed me instantly and then I just filled in some of the details from what I knew about the Doctor and Jamie from that one time I yeah, met them. This is like some usual suspects BS. To spoil that movie for you and probably anyone else who hasn't seen Thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jen's like, oh, you lied to me to get me to read that file so that I know about the program that the company did to you and indoctrinate a bunch of other kids. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, so the whole thing, I guess, was kind of like an allegory. Like, the whole alien stealing the kids... <sighs> Was supposed to be this Pied Piper of Hamlin, like this okay, mirror no. version of the company stealing the kids in the future to yeah, indoctrinate I guess, them. Yeah, I thought it was going to be that, like the kids that the alien stole were the elite program, but I guess that's not it. No, that would have been a couple cool. centuries between them. Yeah, but they could have like time traveled somehow. I don't know. So yeah, because Zoe keeps talking about our ho the. Alien stealing the kids, she could see on the mother's face is the same look that her mother gave her when she got taken by the company to the elite program. Yeah. And so I guess that was, I suppose, the whole point of the story Zoe was telling. Yeah, it was to Jen. Like, yeah, I guess. Because she's trying then, to break Jen's faith in the company, I guess. Yeah. 
which kind of works. Jen is like, no, I, I have all this evidence. You, you couldn't have possibly done this. Um, yeah, like there's a picture, like I said, of Jamie, Zoe, and the doctor, and Jamie's playing football, and the doctor and Zoe are in the background. Yeah, and the lieutenant guy has like some written documents or whatever. So yeah, the letters what, that he yeah, sent, which is what Zoe read instantly, and pieced together the entire <laughs> false story. Um, um, and it kind of just ends with Zoe saying, like, "Well, it's up to you to believe me or not, Jen, or something like that." It ends. On a, a lot more of an uncertain note than Echoes of Grey did. Yeah. Like, Echoes of Grey had a definitive ending where What's-Her-Name left Zoe's house and said, you know... Yeah, well, I mean, it was open <clears> for, <throat> like, this to be made, obviously, but... Right. It wasn't like, there has to be a sequel to that, whereas, like, you get to the end of this and you're like, well, there doesn't have to be one, but there probably should be yeah, one. You feel like Echoes of Grey ended in a way that <clears throat> left it open to a sequel, whereas this one ended in such a way that there would be a sequel. Yeah. And, I mean, I guess that's okay, but at the same time, the ending was kind of underwhelming because Zoe's all, you have to decide what I am, and Jen's like, I don't know what you are, and then it ends. So Zoe's still trapped by the company. You don't actually ever find out how she got captured by the company, presumably after the last story, the company came and just took her. Yeah, I mean, they seem pretty powerful and omniscient and stuff, so, yeah. (laughs) Um... I mean, I, and I don't know, because I haven't looked into this series, but yeah, I don't know if there is actually a sequel to this. There are two more. Huh. There's I, one called The Uncertainty Principle, which continues directly from this, and then the, I think very close to the final Companion Chronicles made when this was still a <coughs> recurring monthly series called Second Chances wraps up the Zoe huh. company. Second Chances? Because yeah. it's the second yeah. doctor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wraps up the whole Zoe company quadrilogy of stories huh i guess we'll listen to those at some point yeah hopefully pretty soon because i kind of forgot what happened in echoes of gray which might have made this a little better Mm. but uh probably not probably not much better because it was really boring for most of it especially part one where they were kind of just walking around town and and stuff and it wasn't really a very interesting location it was just sort of a small town so and I guess that's sort of the opposite of all the audios we've been listening to so far, because most of the two-parters we listened to so far, like oh, Ghost in the Machine, were like, yeah, part one was great, and then part mm-hmm. two just sort of fell off the map. I definitely feel like they f- intentionally made part one super long, because it was. Part yeah, one part was almost was like 40, 40 minutes, yeah. and part two was only 26, I think. Yeah, something like that. Which is pretty much an inversion from all the other two-part stories we've listened to, which are like really long part twos well, and most, short part they're ones, mostly, mostly equal they're pretty much equal um eh. i mean they might be off by like five minutes but i don't consider that as like as I mean, drastic look, as this for the past three weeks i would say yeah it has been pretty disproportionate like uh, looking at the exact times yeah it it has been pretty disproportionate mm, i don't know i don't know if you really notice it while you're listening to it but like on the audiobooks app on the iPhone, it tells you oh. how long each part is. Yeah, well, I mean, I listen to them on my computer, and usually I don't stop on the the part. I just mm-hmm. stop whenever I want. So, although I didn't notice it here because it was like way longer. <laughs> I was in like thirty five minutes. I was like, just end already. Yeah, I re- I also really liked the conclusion to the story where Zoe was like, "I made it all up." Now I kind of wish the story had been more consequential so to speak so that when she said oh i made it all up it was more of a bombshell because the story as it was wasn't really very interesting so the fact that she made it up i was like yeah so you made up walking around town with some kids and going to a school yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) like okay you didn't really make up anything very interesting or compelling and, you know, there wasn't really a reason for you to make it up because it doesn't seem like the story would have been very interesting anyway. <laughs> so, like, if she was making it up to hide something, like, maybe she remembered something and then she made up the story to cover up what she would remembered to keep it from the company. And then at the end of the story, she's like, oh, I made it all up. And then she reveals what she covered up or whatever, like, in private so that the audience knows, but that the company doesn't or something. Yeah. That could have been, I think, better interesting or would have made the story more compelling. Yeah, probably. 
or if we'd been getting like snippets of inside Zoe's mind of what she was thinking when she was making up the story so that we were in on the conceit from the beginning. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like there was a lot of potential with the whole I made it up thing because, you know, we haven't seen that done in an audio before or on TV. Like we've never been told not to trust what we've seen on the show. Yeah, maybe it's maybe Doctor Who will end with I don't with know, what a Saint Elsewhere ending? Yeah, I guess so. Do you know how Saint Elsewhere ended? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Do we ever really know on this show? You can email us at the doctordecadavegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry rants, love letters, your thoughts. On the memory cheats, the Do podcast. We- Tell us about the podcast. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I've only listened to a few of them, honestly. Yeah, me too. Um, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and YouTube, all at Trust Your Doctor. Leave a rating if you liked the show. Check us out on Facebook, Trust Your Doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week we're covering Sentinels of the New Dawn. But until then, the end. Uh-huh.